It's the American Conference. Away from downtown Houston for the matchup of the SWAC and the American Conference as the Texas Southern Tigers get ready to take on the Cougars from the University of Houston. And we all know it's a stressful journey and a long one at that for the Tigers for this road game. Six tenths of a mile. That is it. That's all that separates these two campuses. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Myers, alongside former Florida State Seminole Forrest Conley, and welcome to the campus of the University of Houston. As soon as we got this assignment a couple of weeks ago, Forrest, you mentioned to me, we are about to watch the best player defensively in all of college football. So I can't wait to see Ed Oliver. Well, when you talk about Ed Oliver, you talk about a guy that plays with a flat back. He's submarines offensive lineman. He brings pressure. Often quarterbacks are looking at the front of the offensive lineman's jersey because they're turning around trying to see where he is because he's beat them. He rushes the passer. He knocks balls down. He, You can double, quadruple, triple, whatever you want to do to try and stop him. You just can't. This guy is disruptive, and he will be playing on Sundays next year. So how many flags will he pull on the offensive line? Because we just saw him tackled on that play, and that is the challenge now for the Texas Southern Tigers, their group up front. Well, for the offensive linemen, the first thing that they've got to do, the guards in the center have to be stout at the point of attack. They cannot allow him to get pressure. And I think everyone on the offense needs to ID Ed Oliver every play. If they're able to do that, maybe they can get some traction and get something going. But if they don't ID him, if they don't put a hat on him, he will disrupt this game from beginning to end. He is just that good. It's amazing how quickly he moves his feet for a guy that's 6'3", almost 300 pounds. So... Rain in the forecast and raining all day long, but it should be a good one. Texas Southern and the Cougars of Houston. That's up next on ESPN. Michael Haywood and the Southern Tigers. Uh, Texas Southern Tigers get ready for the matchup. Michael now in his third year played his college football in South Bend for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And there is Major Applewhite. Well documented his career from Mac Brown at Texas and now the opportunity and in his second season after a bowl game and a winning record in his first season last year close losses will get into that but what an atmosphere uh, the rain has kept a lot of people away unfortunately as you're looking back deep for the Tigers it is going to be Rajon Cunningham a redshirt freshman from Dallas it's an American crew our officials today and kicking it away it's going to be Kate Novikov the senior from San Antonio so will the return game be in effect so often they kick him out of the end zone but it is going to be brought back man coming over to the nearest side good angle outside and a slick return to the outside just to the 20 though good coverage downfield Ontario Brown the running back and sophomore from Humble Texas so that's where they'll get the football. As it's brought back outside of the 20, put Texas Southern at their own 21 yard line. And, and they've used both quarterbacks for us already this season. Kouye, and that's Glenn Kouye, who's the backup, a graduate transfer from Tulane. And in fact, Kouye is going to get the start. Jay Kristoff has started a couple of games as well, so. Uh, the opportunity is there for both. There's no question about that to get in. Bunch on the short side of the field, go to the wide side of the field. And he's got a good arm, but he's wide of the intended target. He's tried to get it out to Bobby Hartson. Well, that's what Texas Southern has to do early in this ball game. You've got to get some easy passes. I want to, if I'm Texas Southern, I want to get the ball out to my athletes in space, allow them to try to make plays. You cannot hold on to the ball long against this defensive line because they bring pressure. It's not a speed line. It's a powerful offensive line. They play with power. The A has already thrown for 529 yards with five scores of the first three. The one and two record coming in. Yeah, nothing doing across the 24, and that's about it. On the carry for Brad Woodard, the senior from Dixon, Dickinson, Texas. And although they only got three yards on that play, I think it's a positive play for the offensive line for Texas Southern. It is well documented for Coach Henry that they have not played as well as he'd like. And this is a great litmus test to see they shortened the playbook. They did a lot more film study. Let's see how that affects their ability to get positive plays. Kouye once again out of the gun. 
needs about seven. He comes, and he's hit as he releases the football. So the pressure came from behind. Down on the outside, Egbule. Uh, out of Galena Park, a young man from right in this area in Houston, the senior. And that will be an issue all night because you know the pocket is going to collapse when you've got Ed Oliver coming, bringing that pressure, but the tackles have to do a better job of keeping the width. That will allow the quarterback to move side to side to try and wait for a receiver to get open. In the punt it away. Aaron Cuevas handling both duties. And the short one, they'll stay away from it as it's going to hit and take a uh, Houston roll. So now the Cougars are going to get it close to the midfield stripe. Put it down. And Bryson Smith was back there, but he was smart. He just stayed away from the Bills. Houston's going to have it at the 49 after only a 27-yard punt. So not the ultimate beginning, to say the least, for the Tigers. Now a 2-1 record so far and a tough loss last week for the Eric King, the junior from Manville, Texas. And he's a wide receiver. He started the last four games. Force, he's just a great athlete, and he's got a good arm as well. Spreads him out. Plenty of time. And going for the home run ball. There's a flag, and there was contact. Trying to find Bryson Smith, the Richard freshman from Tyler. And that's too much time for De'Aaron King. You cannot allow him to just sit back there and look down the defense. Number 26, Markel Dago never turned around to locate the football. He put his arm and went through the receiver. You've got to turn around, locate the football. You can have contact if you're looking for the football and you're playing the ball, but if you don't turn around, that's an easy call for the officials. So King, not a big guy. In fact, 5'11". So if they list him at 5'11", what is he real? 5'9 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but he has been super effective. Give up the middle on first down. And the first carry of the game goes to Patrick Carr. He's from the Woodlands. In the Houston area, the junior takes it for about four. They're going to go with tempo. They're going to go with rhythm. Stafford Jr. made the stop, but on the outside, spin down to the 25. That's Marquez Stevenson, who leads the nation with big plays. Five, which better than 50 yards already over the first three games. So, And he almost showed it there. And what's more impressive about their offense is the blocking from the receivers on the outside. They do a very good job of blocking. Patrick Carr. Goes through an arm tackle, and a good run on first down. He's got almost eight down to the 17. So short field to begin with, and tempo. Hot, King, good hands, look at, look out. It is Stevenson, head over heels. First and goal inside the five. Oh, they put him down. It's marked right at about the six, five yard line, where he stepped out of bounds. Brooks on the hit. And King did a good job of corralling the football and not freaking out, not panicking, but getting the ball outside to his receiver to allow him to make the play down the field. King walks into the end zone and a play fade. That took a long time. Give a five-yard touchdown run for De'Aaron King. And he's accounted for a ton of TDs already coming into this game. And adds to that. And what makes this Houston offense so lethal is they go so fast while the play is ongoing, the coaching staff is sending in the next play. So you saw Texas Southern never able to sub any guys in, and you see the effects. Dalton Witherspoon in for the point after. He pops it through. It was a five-play, 51-yard drive. And boy, Kendall Bryles has to like their offensive coordinator one. Two minutes or less, as usual. Five-yard touchdown run by the Eric King. So he takes it in, uses the ground game. Second of the nation coming in for us with 12 passes. 12 TD passes already over the first three. He's a big playmaker. Well, that's what makes this team so dangerous. He's very effective passing the football, and he's a very good decision-making on the RPOs. So he knows when to keep the football, when to give it to his back. You know, it's all about sticking it in the belly and making the defender make a decision. He has done a great job so far. And the way that he did not panic when the ball went through his hands, he gathered the ball and got it to his receiver to get 10, 12 yards on that play. A lot of times you see quarterbacks panicking. He did a great job on that. Back deep, same pair, Cunningham, along with Terry O'Brown. 
Novikov will kick it away. So an early seven to nothing lead for the Cougars with a light rain shower still. And it'll stay in the end zone for a touchback. So Texas Southern gets it. By the way, that was a minute and 13 seconds that drive. Five plays, 51 yards, and Forrest got to bring it up because they had seven touchdowns last week in the road loss for Texas Tech. Six of the seven were two minutes or less. And you have to wonder, does that hurt your defense? Because they don't get time to rest. Right. When you're going so fast out there. You have to wonder how that affects the defense. I don't know if they're complaining, though, as long as they keep scoring. The defense is the issue. Now, let's see what the defense does. They're three and out on the first series, but defense comes in giving a positive 58 yards a game of total offense to the opposition. Kuya, quarterback, on the play fake. And a quick one on the out, complete pass for 30. As it's taken in by Hartzik, the Jesus graduate the transfer from Kansas, but he's a Houston guy to begin with, and he's put down by Sprewell. And that was a good job by the offensive line of Texas Southern. Something I see that Houston is doing different than they did last week. They're bringing up their outside linebackers, so instead of showing a three-man look at the line, they're showing a four- and five-man look. What that does is that affects the offensive line's ability to double Dale Oliver in the middle. Got a little press coverage on the outside. Running game effective up the middle. They were coming from the outside. So on the carry, it was Woodard once again. Godfrey put him down. Ed Oliver at the first stop of the game. We're going to focus a little bit on Ed Oliver throughout the course of the night. The, the junior who stayed home, Westfield High School, right here in Houston. And what a story he has become. Well, he's lived up to the expectations. You're home. Everybody expects you to be great, and he is just been great. He's not letting anybody down. He's going to go into the draft. He's already said that. It'll be a jet sweep. Then Matt on the turn. That was a pop. Hartzik with a wide receiver on the jet sweep. Popped out of bounds after a short game. It's going to bring up as Alexander Myers, the corner, the senior from Houston on that side, was waiting for him on the outside. Now, there's some things I think that Texas Southern can take advantage of because of this pressing defense that Houston brings some misdirection. And I think also spring Kouye out of the pocket, giving him more time to get down the field. And out of her very muggy night. Now, the temperature's dropped a little bit, but a very muggy night with the rain falling as Kouye puts Woodard over to his left side. And he's going to do it on a run pass option. He's got the first down. Smart play by a veteran graduate transfer from Tulane. This is a guy who had starts at Tulane. He, in fact, played a ton of games for the Green Wave. And you see the misdirection. The offensive line flowed to the right. You saw the defense flowing with them. They're so aggressive. And that's a good job by Kouye to recognize that and get down the field and get the first down. You have to use a team's speed against them when you're playing a team like Houston that brings their defense up the field. Now three on the front. Low snap. Quick out. And it's complete. Got a first down to Rick Buchanan, the sophomore from Elgin, Texas. They're moving the chains again. And one of the things about the defensive backs for Houston is they know that they can come up, they can play press man, they can jump some routes because of the pressure their defensive line has been able to get. If the offensive line for Texas Southern is able to block and give Kouye time, I think he has an opportunity to get the ball to his receivers. He's got some transfer receivers on the outside that are big guys and that have played in big games. It's a first down. In Houston territory. They can slide the tight end, run to the tight end side. Now the motion man bouncing outside Woodard. But well, it converts well. Good team speed by Houston out of the secondary on the run support and a gain of a little more than a yard at the most. If it takes a second to be successful, I think you need to be north and south. I don't think East and West will get it because of the team speed for Houston on defense. You've got to hit it north and south. Safety Sprewell came up, and he's starting, don't forget, because of the loss of an injury for Garrett Davis. And that's a huge loss. A senior starter, a three-year starter. And may make it back before the end of the season. Out of the gun, second and long. Middle of the field. Yeah. Looking for Dixon. Ten Damian Dixon is off for another Navasota, Texas. It falls incomplete, but there was heat in his face, wasn't there? Well, I think Kuya still had a little bit more time to throw the football. You can't, you're going to get pressure. You're going to see pressure. But the offensive line did a good job on that play. They only had three. They only brought three as far as pass running. He had time to go down to build the football. I thought he let it go prematurely. Eighth play of the drive. It's starting back. 
At the Texas Southern 25. It'll be third and nine for the 42. Offside, no. Ball start. Who's moving on the line? Houston show blitz on that play. Let's see. Because the other linesman, you can see, he's saying, well, they came first. The defense. Well, the defense has the opportunity to get back on defense. If the offense jumps, it has to be instant jumping. So a free five, the calling it on a boule. If you're going to call that on the offense, let's see right here. You see the defense moving around. The offense has to jump immediately when the defense steps across the line. The defense can get back on side. If the offense jumps, you know, late after they jump, then they're going to call that on the offense. They're going to call it legal procedure. So that was a good call by the officials. It'll be third and four. Billiard. Middle of the field, great grab. Pulled in by Buchanan. Went up to get at the transfer from BYU. 11 grabs over the first three games. Looking for his first touchdown of the new season. Good hands. And the coaching staff talked about Buchanan being a technical route runner. You see him get to the inside, and he puts his body in between the defender and the ball. A good job of body blocking him where only he can make the play on the football. This has been the problem, though, over the first three games, the secondary of the Houston Cougars, giving up a ton of passing yardage. First and 10 of the 28. First carry of the game. Doesn't go for much for the Tigers' Tyler Cook. Junior from Dallas at 5'8", 180. So he shut down right away. We saw Godfrey in there, the junior from Missouri City. And although Oliver didn't make the play, he was disruptive enough to slow down the back to make him rethink where he wanted to go with the football. That's what you want to do. You're not going to see a whole bunch of sacks from Oliver, but he affects the ball game in so many ways. Can't play the drive. On a second and about eight. Rushing four. Kuye buys some time and out of bounds. Big quarterback and a mobile quarterback at that. 6 3 2 10. Anderson on the coverage here, looking for Buchanan. And this is what I expect to see off in this season. Kuye swing outside of the pocket. And I tell you what, that right foot looked like it may have been down. They don't want to review that. Take your time. Right, they're going to buzz upstairs. It looked like he could have gotten that foot down. Instead, going to be third and eight. Early 7-0 lead for the Cougars. Kuye, can he dive and get it? No. He goes down too soon. Inside the 20, he's shy by about a yard, yard and a half at the most. And Kuya has to know where he is. He has to know where the sticks are because he could have gotten that first down. And in a ball game like this, you don't want your quarterback to get hit. But Kuye is a bigger quarterback at 225 pounds. You've got to take that extra step, that extra yard to get that first down. Things like that fire your offensive lineman up. They see you're willing to give up your right. body and get that first down. It gets those guys going. It gets the juices flowing. They'll be going forward on board down. It's fourth and a little less than two in the eye. Kouye out in the flat and it's dropped. Unbelievable. Available and wide open and a good play call. It was Adrian Carter, the fullback. Young man from right here in Houston. And Carter started to pay attention to Deontay Anderson, number two, coming across. You've got to put it all on the line. You've got to squeeze the football. You can't worry about turning up the field to make a play. Watch Carter on this play. You see him looking. He's looking to where he wants to go. Squeeze the football. You've got the first down. It's not about turning up the field and getting more yards. It's about getting the first down. Now it's a long field. But there was no resistance the first time Houston had it. So 7 0 lead for the Cougars. A little more than halfway through the opening 15 minutes of play, and a huge hole. Big run over to the left side. Ball Bacar gets his first touch of the game. He's a junior from Reagan High School in Austin. He's got a first down. So a little more than 10 on the carry. And unfortunately, one of the Tigers is down. 
bad break. And this is an impressive offensive line from Houston. Six foot five and a half, 307 pounds average. Four of the five starters on the offensive line were basketball players in high school. So you know these young men have really good feet. They do a good job of getting up to second-level defenders and allowing their backs to get down the field. You saw on that play, Carr didn't see a defensive player until he got to the second level of the defense. So they do a good job at the point of attack, and they do a great job of coming off those tandem blocks, which are double teams, and climbing to that second level. Now you got a senior at guard, senior at center, three-year starter at left tackle. A lot of things work into their favor right now. So when we come back, 6.59 to play, an early lead for the Cougars, and they're rolling once again. It looked like Anderson might be okay, and that's a fortunate aspect. The young man, Texas Southern, as he got up and made it over the sideline on his own. De'Ara King and the offense ready to go. And a little bubble out for the wide receiver. Nothing doing this time. And a good play on Courtney Lark. Young man from Bel Air High School, not too far from here. Downtown Houston. He's brought down by Stevenson. Stevenson did a good job getting around him. Receiver to make that tackle. Boy, what a cushion. Incredible. Terry Marks got the catch, but I'm surprised. I mean, the D back is 10 yards and back pedal. And you used to see defensive backs play up and play press man on the field side. Second period of the game, Tyler Cook tried it over to the left side for maybe a yard. That is it. Tried to get a replay. It's second and nine. Final little crease, and his knee was down, but no whistle. It's taken in by Devin Williams. Or check that. It's Keith Corbin who takes it in. So it'll be third and short. And Texas hadn't had an opportunity to sub in the player yet on defense because of how fast Houston is going on offense. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Try to make a personnel change. Third and three. It's too tall. You can see that when it left his hand looking for Terry Mark. <laughs> you hey, got a smaller quarterback. Let's not forget. Well, he didn't set his feet on that play. He let the ball go without setting his feet. He set his feet. Step through on the throw. Take a little bit off of it. He's not had pressure in his face every time he's set back to throw the football. So take your time. And he did that time on fourth down and three. And a broken tackle to the outside. But he's out of bounds. On the deck. By Courtney Lyon. And the defensive backs need to come up and play press man on fourth and short because you know they're going for the quick pass. It's a timing route right here. You see the defensive back playing way off too big of a cushion. He's already given him the first down at the snap of the football. King has a ton of time. He's going to run it. Got him about 29 passes last year before they inserted him over the final four at quarterback. And, and as we found out yesterday, Kevin Bryles and Major Applewhite, just a quality young man. He's a winner, period. It'll be second and short. Little bubble once again. And enough for the first down for Lark. And it's just easy pitching catch right now. Texas Southern has to find a way to get some pressure on King. I think with some of these short routes, these quick routes that they're running, they need to think about trying to jump one or two just to let King know they're not going to let him just throw it. And he loses the football. That's a fumble and a huge loss. Uh, it is first down, though. But a loss all the way back to the 40, so a loss of about 16, 17 yards. Well, you see a slippery football. It's been wet all afternoon into the evening. You've got a light drizzle going right now. King just has to squeeze the football. It's a 10th play of the drive. It started back at the Cougars' 20-yard line. And they get field goal territory, even if they can't pick up the first down. And now an adjustment. And this is rare. We haven't seen this so far. Where they actually check and look back over to the sideline. On the play fake. Great pocket protection. Middle of the field for Vanderbilt. And make it a miss. What a run by Stevenson. Sophomore from Shreveport. He got a lot of yardage back and it's going to make it a manageable third down now. 
You just see the touch by King on this play just over the outreach hands of number six, John Jones, the middle linebacker for Texas Southern. A good job getting the ball down the field to a playmaker. Now can they get the first down? Breaking tackles. We'll get it. He will get it. Mobile car. It looked like they could have wrapped him short by a couple of yards, but Carr got the wheels going. Daigle finally got him. When you see the physicality of Carr on that run, running over a defender. First and goal from the eights. On the play fake, middle of the field. Well timed, Stevenson had it knocked away at the last second by the safety, Marquise Walker. And I like what Walker did, wait till the ball got there. He was beat, but he did a good job of waiting and getting that hand up from there in the last minute and knocking that football down. So 14 plays, that's an eternity for a Houston Cougar drive. It'll be second and goal. Shift the tight end, Brooker. Like an H back to the left. And wide open, touchdown, Houston. He caught it on the receiving end. What Houston did on that play is they motioned the left tackle Josh Jones across the formation. You see him coming across, so it looks like a run, and you see the defenders reacting to the tackle pulling along the back of the offensive line. When the receivers, excuse me, when the defensive backs react to that, now you allow the receiver to get to the inside. And there was nothing he could do about trying to knock the ball down. Point after by Dalton Witherspoon is perfect. The sophomore from Moore, Oklahoma. And he got a time out of the field. Long drive. Boy, boy, that's an eternity. Better than four minutes taken off the clock for the Cougars. They're not used to that. They're used to leading them by 14. Light rain falling at the start of the game, and it is dissipated for the most part. It's in a beautiful night. Just a couple of miles from downtown Houston, the home of the Cougars. And welcome back once again, Joel Meyer Sports Conley and the Cougars. Took 420 off the clock, which is an eternity for them, the way they were playing this year in their style. So Kendall Bryles taking after his dad, Art, when it comes to spreading out defenses and doing things in a big hurry. Now back deep. It is going to be Brown along with Cunningham. And fair catch called for. So they'll bring it out like a touchback. So it's at the 25, the third drive of the game for Texas Southern. Last drive, they did have it for 12 snaps, move 55 yards for us, build off of that. They failed on a drop. Their tight end dropped the ball. Otherwise, they've got a first down on the fourth and two. Kouye keeps Woodard in the backfield. On the low snap, pressure comes. Good grab on the outside. No, couldn't hang on. It's Trent Davian Dixon dropping the football. Now watch this play. You see the left tackle going motion, and the linebackers come up because they see the counteraction, which opens up the middle of that defense and allows for the quarterback, the Eric King, to throw a strike to Keith Corbin. Very easy pitch and catch. That's what they're doing to this defense. They're making them react to what they're doing, which gives them the opening that they need to get the play that they want to get down the field. That's a pretty quick left tackle. 6'7", 310 pounder, and he was across in a hurry. Now, on 7 and 10, nothing doing on the ground. That was Woodard again. So third and long coming up for the Tigers of Texas Southern. And I think for Texas Southern, they've got to go to the short pass again. Quick short pass the game. You want to make these defenders from Houston run. You want to get them running sideline to sideline. Now, to your point, and we brought it up. Everybody has been able to throw the football against this defense. They give up 558 a game, and most of it through the air. 426 of that through the air. But here comes the heat at Oliver. It's out in the flat, and making a miss. Great play on the outside by Bobby Hartsey. And that was a good job by Drake Sanders, number 77. He came across. He didn't get a lot of Oliver, but he got a little bit. He got in his way, made him think 
and made him pause just a little bit before he was able to get his hands up and get in front of the quarterback. You don't have to get a knockout punch. You just have to get in the way some of the time to allow the quarterback to see the field and put the ball where he wants to put it. Just enough. Just enough. You got it. Too often guys trying to get the knockout punch. That's not what it's all about. It's about allowing your quarterback to get the space that he needs. Movement up front. It's going to be a false start this time. So on a first down, make it first and 15. And that's what you cannot have. You cannot have a positive play from your offensive line and you come back on first and 10. Those are mental mistakes that you cannot make. One of the things that Coach Haywood talked about was inappropriate behavior by his offensive line. Yep, they cost him five there. Now they spread them out. No tight end of the formation. Two to each side. Another flag and another false start. False start. Offense, number 11. Five yard penalty. First down. Wide receiver. He's got to be looking down the line, doesn't he? You know when the snap count is. That's the one thing offensive coaches always say when you jump off sides. Why are you jumping off sides? You know when the snap count is. You can't worry about what the defenders are doing. They're going to move around. They're going to jump around. They want you to react. Your job is to make them react off of you because you know when the snap count is. So all of a sudden after a, a big play by Hartzell, back to that mark off. It'll be first to 20. Back at the 32. Pressure up the middle and getting his feet down on the outside. It's complete as it's taken in by the league web. The junior from Dallas. That was NFL though. He got both feet down. And I like what Webb did on that play. He made sure he got that reception. Not a lot of yards, but once again, it's a positive play. That's what you're looking for if you're Texas Southern. Positive plays right now. Got seven. So take three of those and you got a first down by a yard because it was first and 20. Second and 13. Good pocket protection. Middle of the field battered away at the last second. Boy, what timing by Alexander Myers. Otherwise, he's gone. He? And I tell you what, if Kouye puts air under the football, there's no one behind the receiver. The defensive back, the safety got caught looking in the backfield. And you see the receiver, Trendavia Dixon, pointing up. Trying to tell P.A. put air under the football. I'll run under it and catch it. Drop it in. Drop it in the bread basket. So now 13. Final minute. An entertaining first quarter. Here comes the heat. Kouye trying to run away from it. And he did as much as he could. They caught him from behind. He got about six, seven yards. But well short of the first down as he goes down to the 45. Robinson in on the stop, quarter. and that is going to be the final snap. So we come right back to the campus of the University of Houston. Beautiful ballpark. It's open, what is it, five years now it's been open. And they have a great one just off downtown. Old for more than 40,000. And the center went in early with good reason. Cougars by 14. We get ready for the start of the second quarter, and there's one guarantee. Uh, when you get ready for Major Applewhite's offense with Kendall Riles as his coordinator, they're going to score. There's no question. Um, Houston comes in averaging 46 a game of the first three. They had seven touchdowns last week and lost 63 49. We'll get into that. And right now, they've got it. Getting it back and get it back early on the block. Picked up. And great field position for the block for the Cougars. The big guy that got in, Peyton Turner. The sophomore from Houston. Well, they had two guys that had an opportunity to block this run. You see him coming from the outside. The personal protectors just let him go by. You've got to see that. If you don't have anything coming in your face, but you see something coming from the outside, you need to change your attention from what's in front of you to what's coming by you. So all of a sudden, they're going to have it. Houston's got it. At the Texas Southern 18 yard line from bad to worse. That's a tall young man to begin with at 6667. 
And if I'm Texas Southern, I'm bringing the house right now. I'm not allowing King to have time back there in the backfield. You know he wants to get that quick passing game going. I'm bringing pressure. He threw for five touchdowns, ran for another. Got a big hole on the right side if he moves. And taking it on the first down carry all the way to the first goal now. It's Kevin Justice, the junior from Kilgore, Texas, for a gain of 15. This time they shut down Justice. Inside the three, down at about the two. And on the play prior, Sean Jones, the best defensive player for Texas Southern, got faked out of his pants. You've got to come up and make that tackle. Don't wait for the back. Justice stumbles his way into the end zone. And that block punt was demoralizing for this Texas Southern defense. They've already had problems stopping Houston. And now you give Houston a very short field. Very demoralizing to give up that block. So three snaps, 18 yards later. And it's going to be the point after from Witherspoon. 21 to nothing, just like that. And watch the offensive line on the touchdown. They do a good job of creating movement. You see everybody going backwards. And that's what you want to do on goal line in red lines, excuse me, red zone situations. You've got to be the lower man. And you look at these offensive linemen as big as they are, averaging six foot five and a half. They're able to keep flat backs and submarine into the end zone. That's what you've got to do. You basically got a bear crawl when you're that close to the goal line because if you get under those defenders, I don't care how strong they are, how quick they are, they're going to be reaching and you're going to be pushing. So the short field after the block by Pete. 31 seconds later, it is now 21 to nothing in the opening minute of the second quarter. So everybody's going to get an opportunity, and then it's going to be, wait a minute, this is game four. How am I using my freshman? I only get him for four games, right? If I want to redshirt them, because we're going to see some true freshmen tonight. I don't think there's any question about that. And I love that new rule, because you give guys an opportunity to not only see the speed of the game, but be a part of the speed of the game. High school players, just like college players going to the next level of the NFL, don't understand how the speed of the game changes. Terry O'Brien will take it. The reserve running back over to the right side. And a good return across the 20 as he's buried at the 21-yard line. On the plus side for us, though, we get to watch number 10 again. So Ed Oliver is back on the field. The youngest winner ever of the Outland Trophy. Taking that honor is just a sophomore and before the new season. And we saw him when we were at the uh, facility yesterday. He's enjoying life right now. He's getting ready. And if you don't need a quarterback, this guy could be the number one pick in the NFL draft. And that's what I think. I think right now when you look at defensive players, he's out of Ed Oliver and Nick Bosa up at Ohio State. Both of those young men to me play the same type of football. I like Oliver a little bit better, but someone that likes Bosa, I understand. These are two guys that can destroy and disrupt the offensively what you want to do. Good play by Courier. Catches long. He's tied in. Then it's in Mississippi. In motion. Well, is that Oliver? He's not going to play at zero. He's not going to play up at the center in the NFL, is he? Well, what was interesting, when we talked to Coach Haywood and we talked to the coaching staff here at Houston, Everybody compares Ed Oliver to an Aaron Donald. Um, Coach Edwards said he compares him a little bit to Booger McFarlane. To me, when I look at him, I see a hybrid. I see a hybrid of, of, of Warren Sapp with the quickness and that quick first step, but the power and the strength of Bryant Young, who played at Notre Dame and played many years for the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, there's always going to be a double, and, and as we found out, there's triples too watching film. You see right there, although they've got a double team, you're still not getting movement, and he still makes the tackle. That's the strength of Ed Oliver. That's the Bryant Young I see in him right there. You can't move him. Two guys, and they still can't get movement. He's able to engage with those guys, look, see where the ball carry is, disengage with those guys, and make the tackle. That's what makes him a special player. I'd like to see him outside, though, a little bit more. He's that fast, and we will get back to that thought. We saw something yesterday on some of the skills and drills. Woodard bounces out, and not a bad play 
coming up on the outside. Austin Robinson showed his lateral pursuit, the inside backer. And you know one thing we, we, we talked about, too, with Oliver, is his intensity throughout the game. Often you see guys that are considered special players only, you know, have that intensity when they're making the play directly in front of them. He's intense throughout the ball game from the first quarter through the fourth quarter. So I think that's what sets him apart when you talk about being a guy that could potentially be the number one overall pick. Saw film, David Bassett, the SID here at Houston Show. So that out of the that just a moment yesterday. A little slight movement up front. And on a second and about seven. Another false start. False start. Offense. Number 63. Bad offense. Right guard, the other Houstonian, but we, we watched this drill. The rope drill. He was yeah. doing a rope drill. It was amazing. The ladder. How quick. <laughs> and he, he looked like a defensive back during that drill. Yeah. It's hard to believe. So we spent time uh, with both coordinators and Major Applewhite. By the way, they're going to get it done. they got to get better defensively, and I'm certain that will happen as well. But offensively, they're ahead of state. They're going to get athletes here. Now, Kouye on second and long, going for the deep ball. Little contact, but no flag. Trendavian Dixon pleading for it. This is a guy that had seven catches for 159. It was the SWAT newcomer of the week in the matchup of Texas State. And a good job by Isaiah Johnson not to panic when Dixon started looking up for the football. He just continued to run with Dixon. And what the Dixon backs needs to do better jobs of. Not just the Houston defensive backs, but a lot of defensive backs in college football. If you're not going to be able to turn around and locate the football, and you want to keep up with the receiver. Wait till you see him getting ready to make a play. And that's when you stick your hand in there and try and knock the ball down. So now third and long. Third about a dozen after the markoff. Coulier, middle of the field, poked away. Safety came up, and that's Gleason Sprewell because he's starting to forget the experience. Garrett Davis, who's got the broken foot. It was interesting. Sprewell was going to make the tackle, and his arm hit the football. I don't think he went to knock the ball down. He went to make the tackle on the plate, and he ended up getting his arm in the way and knocking that ball down. Either way, he'll take it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Another fight coming up. I'm sure he's telling the coaching staff, I went in there to knock the ball down, as opposed to just trying to make the tackle. Bryson Smith goes back deep, waiting for the punt return. They've already got one block, and that's a beauty. That is a really good one by Aaron Cuevas. Now Smith turning the corner, and breaking tackles. He's belted and buried. So they lined him up after they slowed him down. That's the linebacker, Sean Jones. And the dynamic defensive playmaker <laughs> comes up with a nice play on the punt. That's why you've got to keep your head on a swivel when you're out there on special teams and you're receiving the football because you've got guys flying around the field running full speed. And it's a good job by Jones not to have a dirty play because that could have easily turned into a targeting play because of the way he was coming. He didn't launch himself. He didn't leave with the crown of his helmet. And he didn't hit him above his shoulders. So that was a good play by Jones. Textbook, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, he wrapped it perfectly as he lowered his shoulder into the band. Going about 110 miles an hour. Well, fortunately, everybody's okay. And it's first and 10 of the 33. With three and a half minutes into the second quarter in Houston. And good to have you with us for the American Conference on ESPN on the play fake. Out of the edge. Big move. And plenty of room to run. We're talking about the escape ability of this offense. for the top, Marquez Stevenson. Leading the nation with five plays already. A better than 50. You can understand why. And they're continuing to run that counter action with Josh Jones, the left tackle, pulling around, which makes the linebackers and the safeties react. It was good for 17. Lark almost made a miss. He should have enough for the first down, I believe. Yes, right at the 40. And one of the things that Houston does a good job of is sneaking the receivers in on their sideline after they've run two or three plays with this quick-paced offense, and they're able to get those guys down the field with those fresh legs. One of the few times De'Ara King looks over to the sideline for the play call. Okay. Nothing doing on the run by Bryce Smith. And a good job by Markel Davis to stay at home. It'll be second and ten.
play fake. Now moving the pocket by design. Good move by King. Look at his feet. And he's belted. Barry. Not a bad stop that time at all. Lined him up. Mark Bell Daigle for the defensive back. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, King, you've got to get down. Daigle is coming downhill, and right here, boom, he lays the people's elbow on King. You've got to get down. You don't want your quarterback to take those hits. But a good job by the Texas Southern defense because they brought everyone over to the right, and they tried to sneak the back out on a wheel route, but they covered that up. King had nowhere to go with the football. Third down and a first down carry. So they, they weren't playing run, were they? The carry is by... They've got double numbers. It's a gain of 10. The running back Chandler Smith, the sophomore from Conroe, Texas. He stays in there, breaks another tackle, and he's got basically a first and goal. I think they're deep in the tailback. And that's those fresh slits. Once again, getting guys in and running their offense. On uh, the play fake. Little screen out for the wide receiver. Stevenson's in. Touchdown, Houston. Not a bad block by Corbin. And that's something we mentioned early in the ball game: the receiver's ability to block on the outside. You see Corbin just getting away. It's not a knockout punch. It's not a knockout block. Just getting in the way and allowing his teammate to cut off of where he is. And then once he's able to cut off of where he is, Stevenson makes another quick move to the inside, makes the defender react, and he's able to walk into the end zone. Witherspoon for the point after. Took a long time again. Two minutes and 20 seconds to travel. 67 yards. Marquez Stevenson. One of the best in the nation. Come out. An abundance of talent on the offensive side for the Cougars of Houston. It's on display early in this game. Forrest, what about Marquez Stevens? Six feet, 190 pounds, sophomore from the Shreveport. Now, I mean, big plays regularly. Well, he's such a shifty player. He's got very good feet, quickness, change of direction. And you saw it on that play. He made the defender react to him possibly going to the inside. And he's able to redirect and get up the field very fast. Brown and Cunningham back deep for the kick. And high one short one at the six. It's Cunningham looking for a lane over to the right side. Got back to the 20, and that'll do it. Texas Southern first and 10 for their own 20. And the ball is down and out. They're going to give it now to Houston. Take it away. It's a fumble recovered by the kicking team. First and 10. Now, Donovan. Newton came out, the linebacker, a junior from the spring, and it is out. And it goes from bad to worse for yep. Texas Southern right here. It's gone before the knee is down. You can see that. Good call by the officials. And a good job by the Houston defenders to put a hat on the football. That's how you taught to hit. Put a hat on the football. So now, for the second time over the last three series, Houston gets it in Texas Southern Territory. They add it to the 18. Now, two series later, they get it at their 21. And you've got a defense right now for Texas Southern that's a little bit gassed. I would not be surprised if Houston tries to go to the end zone on this play. Freshman Keelan Walker in the backfield from DeSoto. And he is a first-year true freshman. High snap for King. He's 13 of 15, making 14 of 16. Broken tackle and popped out of bounds. The reception by Jeremy Singleton, his first young man out of Brother Martin High School in New Orleans. And number 21, Stevenson, has to make that tackle. If you don't make the tackle, try and force your receiver back to the inside where pursuit is coming from. They'll give it over to the left side of the first year freshman. And he's got it down to the five. So Keenan Walker, 5'11", 215 pounds. I would think they're going to go deep. The Eric King now, 14 of 16, 134 yards. He accounted for, he was part of six scores last week. He's already part of two. And on the throw, wide open, touchdown Houston. It's Terry Martin.
and you see what Houston's doing there. Going motion prior to the snap, and that's allowing King to get his pre-snap reach. When you have a man in motion, that allows you to see what the defense is doing. You find out if they're playing man, if they're playing zone defense. And once the quarterback is able to read what they're doing, he knows where he wants to go with the football. A little more than eight to play. The Withers group makes it a 35-point lead. Time out. It could be worse. Nebraska is down 39 to nothing at the half. Oh, that's right. We still have a lot of time left. 8 11 to play in the second quarter. Cougars take care of turnovers and produce. Cougars try to win three of their first four and what a head start. Eight plus to play, leading by 35. We spoke with the defensive coordinator, Mark D'Onofrio, yesterday. They were talking about batting the tackle, the lack of tackle in the secondary. So encouraging signs, at least early in this game, because last year when we get into the schedule, they lost some unbelievably close games. Even though they got to the postseason and even lost the close game of the ball. Now the kick. And Brown's going to call for fair catch, which will put it. And I'll blame it at the Texas Southern 25. And one of the complaints Coach Nafrio and the rest of the coaching staff, Coach Apple White included, was guys were talking about how Ed Oliver is getting doubled and triple teamed and getting held. But I love what Coach Apple White said. I, I never complained to the officials. Guys, go out there and make a play. And he said it in a little bit more authoritative right. form. <laughs> but I understand what he's saying, and that's what needs to happen. You can't depend on your big play player to make every single play. You've got to give him support. So when he's getting doubled and triple teamed, that means somebody else is going to be one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And those guys have to step up to the plate. From the 25. They're going to move the pocket. Five receiver on the edge. 50 move on the catch. Taken in over there by Bobby Hartzog. And I think that's where they can have a lot of success. Moving Kouye outside of the pocket. Allowing him to have more time to look down the field, survey what the defense is giving him, and get the ball to a playmaker to allow him to try and make a play up the field. So now it's going to be second and short. I said to you, maybe just set things up with a little ground game. They'll try it here. Good drive of the running back, but he's going to be just shy of the first down. Well, they're going to get a lot of people in there. There's no question. There's the backup quarterback. He's warming up on the sideline. Maybe a bit prematurely quick. Gordon. Senior from Bernie right outside of San Antonio. So third less than a yard. They keep Cook in the backfield. In the eye this time with the fullback. Cook. Breaks the tackle at the point of attack. Gets the first down by a yard. So that's the clock moving. Fresh set of downs. That's tough inside running. And Cook's the end. Hey, good job by the offensive line to get movement. They got under the defensive line and they were able to get movement. Get out of the sideline this time. So another guy getting an opportunity up front. As Houston's going with the backup in the middle right now. Four out of them. That's Fleming. The junior. Neil Fleming. Kouye. And there was contact. They're not going to get a, a flag. But boy, that is a bad break. That was Roy Lane Oliver on the pass pattern. He was held. It was a late flag. Yep, he came finally. But he was grabbed. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. Austin Robinson of the cover. There's no foul for defensive pass interference. Pass is incomplete, second down. Well, it should be pass interference, it should be defensive holding. Was the ball tipped? Is it something that I didn't see? Because <laughs> he grabbed him around the shoulder pad. Grab, pure grab around the pads. You're right. You and I saw it. They did. Let's see if we can see on this play. Yeah, yeah he's he, <laughs> Yeah, he pulled him, almost pulled him all the way around. You gotta make that call. It'll be second and ten. 
Dixon the motion man. Kouye in trouble. And didn't have a choice. In the direction of Chris Long. Uh, but Heat in his face. And the pressure came from Derek Parrish, the linebacker. Redshirt freshman. Carolina, Texas. And no ground game, so pick and tee off. Well, although this game is pretty much going Houston's way, I think there's still some questions with their ability to defend the pass. We've seen Texas Southern get some positive plays passing the football. They gave up 63 in Lubbock last year. Now, four-man rush, Kouye, just got rid of it. Put back to the line. And it's going to be a punting situation. But there should not be pressure when you've got four going against five. The Texas Southern offensive line has to do a better job of blocking those guys. I understand Ed Oliver was in on that play. They probably double teamed him. But you still got one on one. So you got one you got guy it. basically blocking Oliver. So that means you've got three pass rushers and four offensive linemen. They should have been able to give Kuye a little bit more time to get the ball down the field. They've already had one punt block. This time, Cuevas gets it away cleanly, and it's a beauty. Bryson Smith with a fair catch. So the Cougars are good at back deep in their own territory after the 47-yard punt. And they'll have it first and 10 at their own 17. Line of scrimmage has not made a difference, though, for Major Applewhite squad. Interesting talking to him yesterday. And, and I was impressed with the facility when we met with the head coach of the Cougars. They've got a great compound here. And you know what it means to young men when you bring them in. Uh, they've got a great setup for down-the-road purposes. Well, recruits will love walking into this facility. You've got the indoor track right there. I love the football offices. They're down at the end of the hall. So getting to the football offices, you see all the pictures of some of the guys that have played here, whether it be track, football, basketball, baseball, all along the hallway. It is impressive. 6-0-2 left in the half. They have scored on every drive. Five for five. Will it be six for six? That's a tough sled inside. That's Keelan Walker, the freshman, first year freshman. Not a redshirt. Good kid. Carries it, protects it, and finds a hole over to the left side for first down. That's Walker once again. She's at about six feet, 215 pounds, and if he's, he's 18, he's only going to grow. And one thing, because Houston has been able to run the ball effectively, Texas Southern is walking the outside linebackers up. So if they're able to get to the second or third level, there's not many defenders left to make the tackle. So Texas Southern has to make sure they get these ball carriers down because there's not a lot left in that defense when you've got everybody up close to the line of scrimmage. Now they're bringing Chandler Smith now. This is their smaller back, speed back, make a miss guy. At 5'8", 195. The versatility that they have now in the backfield as well. It'll be second and ten. One of the few poor throws we've seen from De'Ara King. It's a low one. It's skipped. And he had Lark wide open. On the outside, Stevenson. And a good job coming up off the edge. Exceptional job outside by Matthew Stevenson. And not a good job by Courtney Lark on the outside. You've got to block CZ. You got you almost got a holding call on that play. Watch number nine, Courtney Lark. You got to make that play. You make that block. You may spring Stevenson down the field. You look at it. The body language tells you all you need to know. Now on third and long, King's got a lot of time, and he's got a wide open. Stevenson. You got to give him some room. And check that. It's not Stevenson that time. Instead, it is. 15-yard game for the Cougars, Keith Corbin. So Corbin's already got a touchdown, but he had the D-back on his heels. Little counteraction. Ooh, pop. Set him up. And the linebacker, Sean Jones. He's late sequence, has it? <laughs> Jones is playing very angry right now. <laughs> you would too if you're down 35. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> the Eric King. And it's Corbin again. They're giving him too much of a cushion for us on the outside, aren't they? Well, they're giving us cushion. What the receivers are doing are pressing these defensive backs 
with these takeoffs and then their stop, these stop routes. Because you're five, ten yards back, when you turn to run, the receivers are stopping and the quarterback is doing a good job of delivering the football. King with another bullet. It's locked. He didn't want to go down. And he loses the football, but a break. Like everything else for Houston, he goes out of bounds. It stays to the Cougars. And you see some of the Texas Southern players patting their helmets and hands on their hips. Fumble four They're without a bounds. The ball will be he returned to the spot of the fumble. First down. But a good job by the defenders to continue to pursue the football and put a helmet on the football. That's how you're taught in game tackle. Hold them up and let someone else come over and try and knock the ball out. Scrape it away. That's what they need takeaways. But a gain of 15 and a first down to the 18 on a drive that started at their own 17. Rib on the outside. Empty moves. First down. Did he get it? Yep. Inside the eight. Good time by Terry Martin who's got to score as well. Missed tackles after missed tackle after missed tackle. Matthew Stevenson, number 21, had an opportunity to make a play. It's the little guy, Smith. He's down to the five. And you see the effects of this fast pitch offense. Defense. 12 players on the field. Five yard penalty. First down. Didn't work, did it? Patrick Howell's trying to sprint to get off the field, but they're going so fast. Texas Southern was not able to get substitutions in. And if you're going to try to, if you're going to try to substitute the big guys down front, those guys can't spread over in time. And now, because of the markoff, they'll take it inside the five, first and goal. Well, it's hard enough when you're on the opposite hash, but then you've got an offense going this fast. These guys are gassed out here. They've been out on the field the majority of the first half. I'm exhausted watching. To first and goal at the four. Smith in the backfield. King with a high snap. Smith battles. Finally spun him down. Almost got away from the linebacker. Boy, he get up and they are ready for the snap. See, 11th play of the drive. Smith up the middle. He's in. Touchdown, Houston. Jammer Smith has one now. And this is just fatigue and attrition right now for this Texas Southern defense. Those young men are tired. They've been on the field a very long time. And Houston just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. They just can't do anything to slow them down right now. Witherspoon in. It's just it's a right. They almost missed it. And he's had a lot of practice, hasn't he? Six touchdowns Time already out. for the Cougars. Up by 42. Three hundred plus yards of total offense already for the Cougars in Houston. I guess you can smile on that side. Man. I don't know about the Texas Southern sideline right now. This game, they put this all together, and, and there's the new indoor complex that blocks our view, unfortunately, of downtown Houston. This is a really sweet setup for Cougars half now. So there's the story, six for six. I wish it, that was me saying it either, just doesn't work out that way. Six for six to start the game for us. Well, it's interesting. We looked at time of possession, and it's almost equal, but it seems like more for Houston because of the amount of plays that they've run. Fair catch. It's Cunningham hanging on. I do like that rule for college football a lot. Well, it's for safety purposes. Without a doubt. The game safe. So, how much more are we going to see when Houston has it? De'Aaron King's already 20 to 23 for 200 yards. 300 yards of total offense compared to basically 100. 3 to 1 there. Well, something you talked about early in the ball game, this being the fourth game, you can get some young guys some playing time and still maintain the red chip. So I think we'll see a lot of young guys in the second half. Running the ball, it's Woodard into the secondary and barely pulled down from behind. Otherwise, he really had a clear pass. Just pretty well saved what looked like it could have been a touchdown after the 16-yard carry. And a good job by the offensive line to climb up to the second level and allow Woodard to get up the field. 
that's key. If you can get up to the second level and get a body on these linebackers, you allow your backs to get in the open field and make plays for you. First down. Woodard again. Backer got him, though. Yeah, I think it's Gerard Carter in the end on that side, the senior from Houston. I'm out. Houston. The first time I'm out. So Houston time out. stops the clock with a minute 47 to play. Mercy. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> Maybe they want to work in their two-minute offense. That's, that's the only, well, their offense is two minutes, so <laughs> they don't have to work on it. That's what they do, two-minute offense. The entire ball game. I, I feel like I'm watching Mike D'Antoni's Phoenix Sun seven seconds or less. <laughs> the old days. So Cougars in the draft because we know Ed Oliver is going to be among this group and taken very high at the end of the college football season, the NFL draft. I think he'll be in the top echelon of those young men who look at where they were Great games. Great players. All first rounders overall. Antoine Smith, 97. Went to Buffalo, 23rd overall. He could play. Right now. Timeout. TSU, their first try timeout. Texas Southern's time going out. to take one. On a second, a little more than 10. Well, he Heisman Trophy winner Andre Bear on that course. Yes. And, and still work with the Texans, besides his ESPN booth. Great football community, there's no question about that. A struggling start for their NFL franchise, though. Yeah, well, got into close games. Texas Southern, they've had a couple of close wins. The Alcorn State game, they fell behind early and had to play catch up. But last year, the, the Cougars, and we'll get into how many close games they lost. The positive for them on the schedule this year, they leave the state of Texas only three times all season. That is really the sound. Now, second, a little more than 10. Kouye with a deflected tip ball, and it finds the receiver as it's taken in by. <laughs> Coming up with it is Bobby Hartzog. And this is Oliver on the tip. You see him right there pressuring. He's able to get that hand up. That's what you talk about a special player. He knows he's not going to be able to get to the quarterback. But he keeps his eyes on the quarterback and what the quarterback is doing. And when he sees him get ready to release the football, he gets his hands up in the air to tip it up. Third three. And completion to Hartzog. Long in motion to tie it in, run away, and in the backfield. Peyton's all over the play, isn't he? Peyton Turner, the sophomore from Houston, has got a block punt. Was he in the offensive huddle? Time out. Houston. The the he was on his back as soon as the running back got the football. And that is a large man. 6'6", 6'7", 290 to move like that. He's got long arms and he uses his length very well. A lot of times when you see guys with long arms, they play very high. He did a good job of getting extension on the offensive line and getting up the field. You cannot allow a defensive end with long arms to get inside hands because at that point as an offensive lineman, you can't do anything. They're in control of you. They can shed you and get to the ball field. It'll be a punt coming up on fourth at about five after the loss. Back deep, it'll be Bryson Smith for the Cougars. Quavis just did a beauty, though. And let's see if we can hang up a high one. Tried to angle this one, a low one, but it hits Smith. Coming around the corner. And out of bounds at the 34. Good return. Good hands to scoop that one up. Otherwise, it's down inside the 10, and you're not thinking about doing anything for the last 44 seconds. Now the question is, does Houston show mercy and take a knee, or do they try and put more points on the board before the half? You know what I know. It's early in the season. They're working on things because De'Ara King's still out there. But I think this is the last year for a season in the ball. Because you have to be careful. You don't want to get anybody hurt. Though. You 
we've got this game well in hand in the first half. From the 34. Looking at the crossing pattern and over is shooting. His wide receiver who was available. Too tall though. For six feet. Jeremy Singleton. I think he just had too much time right there to throw the football. He just got rid of it because he was standing back there kind of just taking his time, going through his progressions, looking at the defense, looking at his guys. You've got to get pressure on him. With that miss, he's now 20 of 24 for 200 yards. And throws right to the linebacker. It's picked off. Coming up with it, Julian Markenzell, the junior from Salford, Louisiana. And Markenzell did a good job of fading out. You see him right here going to the outside. He's watching the quarterback side. He spied the quarterback the entire play and stepped right in front of the football. I don't think King saw him, but he stepped to the outside, dropped back in his own coverage, and just waited on the quarterback to release the football. Solid play. Got to the game second for Texas Southern in stops, but as you said, just read it beautiful. Kouye and the Tigers get some points before they go to the locker room. He, on the quarterback, sidesteps it, but he's going to be hit from behind and dropped. Took too long, didn't it? Carter gets the sack, but his flag's on the right side where it's holding. Well, I blame that on Kouye. You know you've got to get rid of the football. You can't hold it that long. You can't step to the Every quarterback's got to have a clock. Yeah, you can't expect your line to block after five seconds. You've got to get rid of the football. Because at that point, they're going to hold. It's kind of like expecting your defensive backs to cover more than five, six seconds. Somebody's going to get open. It comes with 27 seconds left of the first half. So the Cougars are no longer perfect. They were six for six. Now a pick by Markington. Kouye keeps Woodard in the backfield. And he's hit as he releases it. Looking in the direction of Dixon. Coming around the edge. How they doing? Hey, Buda. Well, the Houston defenders are picking their ears back and coming after the quarterback because they know he's trying to pass the football. He's got a good foot of the football. I think mean, a quick passing game. Crossing routes. Hit your receivers in motion. Allow them to try and get north and south. I don't think you can sit back there in a five-step drop and try and survey the defense when you're playing against a defense that's a pressure-type defense that's coming up the field. Well, let's see if they get. They've got enough for two snaps. And can they get field goal territory? Dump it off. Woodard on the screen. And it's down across the 50 at the 48. Not going to be the final snap. Yes. The clock continues to roll, but wait a minute. Timeout. Time out. Uh, you can get one thrown to the end zone. Four yeah. time out. Why not? You're down by 42. Well, I think you're trying to go vertical down the field. Hopefully, get a uh, passing field to give yourself another opportunity to try to throw it to the end zone. I don't think you'll have time. To sit in the pocket and try and get it to the end zone because they're gonna. I would, I would not be shocked if they brought pressure, brought an extra pass rusher on this play. If you're confident in their ability to keep everything in front of them, prior to QBA being able to get rid of the football and get it down the field far enough to get it to the end zone. They've been getting pressure though with a straight four man rush, haven't they? So, if, to your point, you're thinking about five, but four has really worked. And if, if you rush 40, you've got seven back in the cover, you wish now. The interception and the interception return. So then you have man to man because you're always you always have two on that all. So then it's individual responsibilities on the other three, and they haven't matched up well. Well, they're playing three deep. They're playing prevent defense. Exactly what I think you should do. Keep everything in front of you. So if you touch a seven, you just gotta hope that you can get an interference call and put yourself in a position to either attempt a field goal or try and throw the ball into the end zone. Cougars rushing only three. One is Ed Oliver though. And now Kouye to the sideline. And incomplete. That'll do it. So a dominating and impressive performance by Houston Forest on the offensive side. Well, they are as advertised. They are fast. They are quick. 
they continue to go, 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 go. If you touch the Southern, they're just trying to catch their breath right now. It's half time. Cougars. 30 minutes away. Three and one. Finish everything that you're doing today. It's gonna to be hard. Who gives a Ed, get a break. That ain't no challenge, ain't no change. Gang on two, one, two. Gang. Before the ball snap, oh, I just visualize him attack. I just know I'm finna hit him hard. Get out the way, get out the way, get out the way. Get out the way. Yeah. It was like a remote control. No pause button, always on fast forward, and no mute button. I tried to beat up on them the whole game, and by the time the second half come, they had enough. Turn it up, B. Best way to describe that, relentless. Relentless. Let go! Hold up! Oh! It's another 100 degree day in Houston. Everybody gonna sweat? The only thing higher than the mercury in the thermometer One, two, three, four, five. Hard feet, get up. is the go. energy of Ed Oliver. Good. You're gonna try to knock me out. You sure about that? Right. Right. <laughs> good. <laughs> I really could have ran him over, but I didn't want to do that. Go! I was extremely hyper. I could not be quiet and I could not sit still for nothing in the world. I've been this way my whole life. If you go back and ask teachers, and they're gonna say the same thing, hyper energetic. Always smiling, always laughing. We got Pete <laughs> from BMT. You know how that boy coming. And then you got Pat from the Woodlands. <laughs> Today, Oliver has reason to smile and laugh. The Cougars' defensive tackle is widely considered one of the best players in college football and a projected top five pick. This, despite his decision to shun the Power Five and attend the University of Houston. Lord to my city, Lord to my family. When I committed to Houston, uh, it was plenty of schools that came. It's like, you really going to Houston? I said, yeah, I'm committed. And if I tell you I'm gonna do it, you, you got my word. He says that he's loyal to the soil. From his city, um, from Westfield High School, it's what he's grown up around and this is his town. They said it was career destruction. I wasn't worried about that. They said the conference wouldn't be strong enough. We wouldn't play any competition. And uh, that's not true. He wants people to see him make plays. Did you see what Ed just did? It seems like that type of gratification motivates him. We always talk about two things, going hard, doing the right thing, all right, and not making the same mistakes. Ed, what can you do here? Uh, put my hand up. Get your hand up. Every practice I grade myself, and I work on the little things that I didn't do good. So one day, I might have went out there and my steps weren't perfect. So next day I go out there and I work on steps. He's a competitor. He, he, he's not someone who rests on his laurels. He loves to go out there and, and compete and prove himself each and every day. And um, that's a blessing as a coach. Oliver's never been one to shy away from responsibility. But even his coaches were surprised when this year, given all he's got going on, he added to his. Y'all take this six month old puppy grown dog. <laughs> the puppy's name, as predictable as the Texas heat. Houston more so laid back. Look at him right now. All he want to do is be loved though. Big old lap dog, 80 pound lap dog. When I come home, most of the time I'm tired, and he just happy, and he just want to be with you. As tired as you were, it's like he gave you uh, like a burst of energy. He don't know no better. He don't know how hard your day was. He happy, so he kind of make you happy. Are you the best player in college football this year? I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't say I am. I wouldn't say I'm not. I wouldn't say... Anybody's better than me either. Going down, and that's Ed Oliver with the sack.
Get ready as we continue with the Capital One Halftime Report to get your Capital One fan vote in. And that's simple. Just go to CapitalOne.com. You can cast your vote for what you think is the outstanding player of the week, the outstanding player as well. So go to CapitalOne.com and get involved. We continue from Houston with the Cougars up the break by 42. Venture card. You'll earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day, not just in airline purchases. Think about all the double miles you could be earning. Holy moly, that's a lot of miles! <laughs> What's in your wallet? They come with the motion across, and it allows him to get the ball out to Stevenson, and he makes a move to the inside, takes the defender, gets to the end zone, and now they're forcing the fumble. So not only are they making plays on offense, they're making plays on defense. And then you bring in the backup, number 23, Chandler Smith, and he's able to get to the end zone. So they spread the ball around with their scoring, and that's how lethal this offense is. Pretty healthy situation right now. There were a couple of moments, and that could have gone pretty well got him around the angles on a nice one by water and number 54 marking tail does a good job of reading king's eyes and getting the turnover he dropped back into the zone and i don't think king ever saw him on that play how about as you look at these numbers how about time of possession where texas southern actually had it for 17 to 13 basically four more minutes so to me meaningless because everything is predicated upon quick and that's what he's doing well you would think the way that the texas southern defense looked on the field that, you know, they've been on the field for so long, but it's just so many plays and how fast these plays are coming at them. I think that's what the issue is for every ball club that faces this Houston offense, the amount of plays that you have to deal with and the velocity of these plays coming at you. So we get ready for the start of the second half as we continue with the Capital One Halftime Report for the Cougars on top of the situation. Fans go. By Dr. Pepper. Three, three, and a fan. That's a tech fan. Holy, what's happening? Dr. Pepper, the official drink of fans. Welcome back once again. And it's fortunate the rain is gone finally. It had rained for a good portion of the first quarter into the second quarter, and I bring that up for us because the two bands got together at halftime and put on some kind of show. That was sweet. And the rain did stop, but I don't think Houston's going to stop pouring it on. <laughs> the way this first half went, and that time of possession is just, when you look at it, you would not think the score would be what it is. But once again, because of how fast and efficient they are offensively, they're able to get the football down the field and get scores on the board quickly. Bradley and Sawyer back deep waiting. And it's going to be Sawyer who takes a shot across the 40. So a nice return by Peyton Sawyer, the wide receiver. And he's, he's from League City, Texas, a true freshman as well. Don't remember that one. It's a return of 28 yards. And it's going to be, I believe, Dorbity. I watched him warm up on the sideline. I think we're going to get a new quarterback in there. No, it is not going to be Quentin Dormady. In fact, in their quarterback now, it is going to be Clayton Toon. He throws on first down, and it's dropped on the outside. And it was available, but tried to run with it. That's Julon Williams, another first-year freshman, Converse, Texas. A lot of touches for youngsters tonight. The opportunity when it, it's not often you get a big lead like this. Especially. We also get to get some live action for some of your young players that you may be thinking of red shirting because of the new rule allowing players to play up to four games and still retain a red shirt. On the run and a powerful run at that. And the line's going to take it for first down. So good run. By Kevin Justice, who's got a touchdown. 
the junior from Kilgore, Texas. And one of the things the Houston coaching staff talked to us about is their second and third team is playing a lot better. And this will give an opportunity to some of those guys that don't get a lot of playing time to play against an opponent in live action as opposed to practice. Trayvon Bradley is one of those guys you're talking about from Cleburne, Texas, the redshirt freshman, who just took it in for the true freshman, Clayton Toon. Toon goes at 6'3", 215 from Carrollton, Texas. Pocket started to collapse. Well, made a miss. Gets into the first down. Inside the 15, down to the 13. So the drive started at about the 42. It's a gain of 11. And Toon wanted to go outside to Ja'Cory Morgan, but he was covered up and did a good job of taking the ball and getting as many yards as he could. Play fake with Justice on the outside. Inside the five. It is Williams, the wide receiver. And it the drop on the first throw. And he's brought down by Patrick Howell. Still get a first down inside the two on second down. Not goal to go yet. And will they need it? Two find some time. Good pump fake. And he's going to go down inside the two. Let's see where they put it. He's pretty close to the first goal. And good job by the defense of Texas Southern to continue the pursuit and not allow Toon to turn up the field. He wanted to turn up the field. It looked like he may have had an opportunity, but pursuit kept coming, and they did not allow him to get north and south. It is a first and goal. Justice stays in the backfield. And on a play, fade, touchdown. Tight end got it. That is Eichenberger. The redshirt freshman from Katie, and everybody's getting involved. So that's also, don't forget, the first career touchdown pass. For the young man who's just taken over, Clayton, too. Don't forget those, do you, Forrest? And who was on the receiving end? Witherspoon for the point after. So it's up to 49 and counting for the Cougars. And their first possession of the second half, 58 yards in a hurry like everything else tonight. Dominating performance. Redshirt freshman Parker Eichenberger with his first score as a member of the Houston Cougars. He doesn't look like he's underage. So the Cougars rolling at 49 to nothing as Cunningham goes back deep along with Brown. Kate Novikov gets into it. Fair catch? No. Cunningham will bring it on his own. And holds on this time across the line. So Texas Southern out to their 21 for their first possession of the second half. We we might have looked at the Cougars a little bit differently last year had they won some of those close games. And I bring that up because uh, they had the three two three point losses, a four point loss, even the bowl game, even the bowl game last year they lost by six, a one possession or a one score game. This is interesting. They brought their first team defense back out on the field. Surprising. Well, I think Coach D'Onofrio wants to get more work out of these guys. When you give up 63 points, you want to make sure that your guys understand the importance of bringing pressure, not laying off. They've got a huge lead right now. But you want to get some good fits. You want to get your defensive backs in the coverage. You want to go against live action. There's nothing like live action as opposed to practice. And Texas Tech, who hung 63 on him and had touchdowns on five of six in the second and third quarter, touchdowns on five of six series, uh, they backed it up so far, didn't they? Against, was it Oklahoma State? Backed it up. We'll get into that in just a moment. Second and ten. He got away from Kouye. Not much available on the outside. Playing hard. 
So you can't mix and match the sophomore Belgium, Texas transfer from BYU. Isaiah Johnson, and, and that's a point of emphasis. The cornerbacks here. And that's what it boils down to. Mark D'Onofrio, the defense coordinator. But he wants them to tackle on the outside. There are a lot of broken tackles, a lot of missed tackles last week. So he wants those guys to be used to making the tackle. Inside of 12 left in the third. On a third and eight. That's the Ed Oliver effect. <laughs> he moves, you move. And he can move as long as he doesn't cross the line. American Conference officials will sort things out. Texas Southern, if you joined us a little bit late, this, this game all emanated from Texas Southern accommodating and helping out Houston to their basketball program. They had two seasons over there while they were getting their facility ready. Ball starts. Offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So two schools that are only separated by six-tenths of a mile. That's it. And a rare appearance between the two schools. One from the SWAC and one for the American Conference. And it got away early here. The Houston Cougars had touchdowns in their first six series. But they're going to be able to score with just about anybody. For us. It's getting stops. Here comes the heat. And under throw. You can understand why. Pressure on Cougar. And they got pressure with four. Once again, as an offensive coordinator, you expect your offensive line to be able to block five against four. And we haven't seen many tricks up front. Stunts, twists. They're just coming straight up. They're beating man up, mano a mano, and they're winning at the point of attack. But that's what we came into this ball game knowing about this Houston ball, ball club. They are a pressure defense. They don't rely on speed. They just come at you with brute strength and power. Beautiful punt by Aaron Cuevas. Fair catch taken in cleanly by Peyton Sawyer at a 46-yard punt with no return. So the distance, and it took a long time. Took a long time for us to get here. 3.4 miles from our hotel. <laughs> we say we're all that good, all that simple. So now the Cougars. And look out. Boy, he was a factor in the first half. This young man could run. Chandler Smith, 5'8", 195, sophomore from Conroe, Texas. He is a hole in a hurry, doesn't he? And that was a great lead block by number 65, Bo, Bo Alexander. He came across and opened up the hole. Smith again. Got another first down, I believe. Yep, inside the 35. Really put him out of bounds. They were in the same play again, and once again, Alexander's able to get across and open up that hole. He's doing a good job of covering up the defender and allowing the back to get up the field. Clayton Toon on the play fake behind his intended target. He's looking for Peyton Sawyer. And Toon needs to set his feet, lead his receiver. He had an opportunity to get him the football and take a little bit off of it. Right. <laughs> Second and ten from the 36. A sultry night in Houston. Started with rain first quarter. Temperatures dropped a little bit, but still a warm night in H Town. Jack Smith that time. But what a great experience for these young players like Clayton, too. We thought we'd see Quint Dormady, the backup quarterback. He's a senior from the San Antonio area, but they're going with a younger guy. And we also talked. And we spent time with coaches talking about maybe using some of these younger guys down the road, using those four games towards the end of the year. A lot of guys they're they're looking at now, and and haven't really put into games they like a lot and want to save for bigger games in conference play. Smith bolts inside the 35 on third. And let's see if they kick a field.
field goal. Or will they go for it on fourth down? You see how fast they're lining up. They know the play they want to run already. But they're looking to the sideline. Toons looking to the sideline. Because they line up so fast, Texas Southern doesn't have an opportunity to get a new player in. Now, they're seeing that they're looking over at the sideline. They're able to get a new defensive lineman in to try and get a pass rush on Toons. To the each side is Julon Williams just came back into the game. The young wide receiver in the slot on the high side. Now, one up for grabs. And it falls incomplete. Good play on the coverage. He was trying to get it to Trayvon Bradley. But they failed on fourth down. Good coverage by Andre Joseph. So the Tigers get it back. They get a stop in a 49 to nothing game. Fans have been incredible here at the University of Houston. And at the Cougars, are, the Cougars band on the other side, Texas Southern band, they were both together at halftime. Was that good for us? Now, first and 10 from the 31. Trying to find some space, but nothing doing. Terry O'Brown, sophomore from Humble. And a short game, keep a yard. So now you try to find out about some guys in a game like this. And boy, yeah, I've watched Scott Frost press conferences after the last two Nebraska losses. And if you're not all in, leave. <laughs> That's what it basically boils down to. Because these are the tests. These are the trying times. Kouye with his running back. And he's got the first down. Well, for the Texas Southern coaching staff, this is when you find out a lot about your players. You know you're not going to win this ball game, but you want to see who's going to continue to compete. Kuge does a good job of getting outside the pocket right before pressure gets to him, releasing the football, and getting into a playmaker allow him to get the first down. But this is when you go back, coaches do, and look at film and see who continues to play hard and who's going to quit. That's what we're talking about. That's what Scott Frost is brought up recently and Nebraska they got hammered by Michigan today after they were smoked last week on the edge Hartside he's got a first down after the nice first down run by Terry Terry O'Brown so Bobby Hartside he's from right here in Houston transfer from Kansas picks it up gain of 13 and this is where Coach Nafio and his staff have an issue you've got your second teamers in here they've got to be able to get stops He's looking for playmakers on that second team defense because as they get into conference play, these are guys they're going to depend on to help the starters. Can't they get the stops? It'll be first and ten. Back to back first downs. Have been rare for Texas Southern. Man. Popped away from the wideout. Good timing out on the outside. That was Anderson in the second one. Deontay Anderson, the safety, a sophomore from Houston. Young man to transfer from Ole Miss. Yeah, he was an all freshman at Ole Miss. Uh, SEC honors all freshman back in 2016. You see Costa dialing up a little bit more pressure, bringing some linebackers, covering the gaps. A little more than halfway through the third. And they get on the board. It's a second and ten on a play fake. It's out on the edge. And look out, breaking into the secondary. Would it go the distance? No. It's Tariq Buchanan. But a first and goal just the same. The deepest penetration thus far for Texas Southern. And a good job of number 11, Trendavian Dixon. Watch him on the outside make a key block right there. That springs Buchanan to allow him to get up the field. That's what makes an offense when you compete on the outside. Just because the ball isn't coming to you doesn't mean you don't continue to compete. A good job by their big play receiver Dixon to get that block and spring his teammate to get up the field. Gain of 44 at a first and goal outside the one. They keep Brown in the backfield behind the fullback. Two tight end set. And he's in. Touchdown Texas 7. Only 5'8", he can get lost in that pile. 
you what, when you look at the play, there was penetration by the defensive line, but Brown was patient and waited for the hole. And once he saw the hole, he was able to squeeze through and get the touchdown. So the Tigers on the board for the first time. Took a while. They'll take it. And now Cuevas for the point after. So Texas Southern. In 39 minutes. They're not complaining. They're finally in the end zone. Little Terry O'Brown. We are still enjoying everything that is coming from that end zone. And that is the Texas Southern band. Joel Myers, Boris Connolly. And boy, the appreciation from the crowd, it was incredible at halftime. And both bands got together. Nothing like that. Well, you, you enjoy the sportsmanship that we've seen. Right. When you look at the proximity of both of these schools, you look at the score, you know, sometimes situations like this can get to a point where guys start to argue and bicker and they start fighting. But I like what I see as far as sportsmanship for both of these ball clubs, and especially with the bands at halftime. That was great. And the fan base from Houston cheering on this Texas Southern band as they performed. A real short one taken by the tight end, Eichenberger. He's already got a touchdown, called for the fair catch. And, and they know each other. These two schools, and it's high school. Long before they ever got to this point, come on. They know each other from playing. Literally. Right. Yeah, and these are Pop Warner You kids. got it. And there's the Houston band as well. The Houston band was sensational before the game. Texas Southern band great at halftime, and then the two bands together. Clayton Toon stays in there at quarterback. And it's warm to be in those band uniforms tonight, those young men and women. I went, had a good grab going up to get it. So it may be short of the first down, but a very good effort over on the far side. That's Trayvon Bradley once again, the redshirt freshman from Cleburne. So it'll be second and a yard. And did they get the first down? It looked like it. Slugging his way. So that was Keelan Walker, who we saw in the first half. They use him as a decoy this time. And Toon is dropped to the backfield for a rare loss. And that looked like, that looked like a quarterback design run. A good job by the Texas Southern defense to get up the field. And not allow Toon to plant that foot and get north and south. That's what you want to do. You want to string out the offensive player when they're going east and west. If you allow them to plant that foot and get north and south, that's when you talk about them getting positive yards. So it's a loss of four. It's now second and 14 back at the 36. Walker stays in the backfield of the play fake. Good pocket protection. All day for Clayton Toon. And good yardage. He's got a first down. Somebody kicked his shoe. It looks like a flag at about the 46, but it's a shoe. <laughs> and Trayvon Bradley comes to get it after the game of 15. Well, watch the on this play. He's looking down the field, surveying the field. He doesn't see anything he likes. They've got coverage underneath and over the top. And once he sees an opening, he's able to get down the field. Good footwork to get that first down. Keelan Walker. A little jump cut for about five. Inside the 45. Two surprising. That's deceptive, isn't it, the way he runs? Well, he's very athletic. He's got really good feet, quick feet. He's able to get up the field, and he's shown some really good decision-making. He's 6'3", 215. Walker powers it off left tackle for a yard. So the clock continues to run. Inside of four to play in the third. Cougars need four for the first down. It's Walker again. Plenty. First down at about the 36. And you know what I've been impressed with as far as this Texas Southern defense? They have not had guys fall down and fake injuries. A lot of times when you see defenses play against offenses like this, you have guys fake injuries to allow substitutions to take place and allow guys to catch their breath. Tune on a pump fake. And going for the deep ball. That time. 
with Morgan to Corey Martin. Another first-year freshman from right here in Houston. But you're right. And we saw that opening week of the season. We saw that. So, and you know and I know the Florida State coach thought, because he wants to play fast, that they were faking injuries. Well, I played in the fast-paced offense with Charlie Ward, and we had teams that would always do that. They had a signal that they would do for guys to fall down and fake injuries to, you know, allow for substitutions to come in, allow to make defensive adjustments, and allow for their guys to catch their breath. Yeah, you, we saw a few of those where they looked back at the bench and then went down. It was a mysterious illness from the sideline. Well, it was obvious. And it was Florida State they were doing it against. I'm sorry I brought that up. Tenth play of the drive has started back at the 29-yard line of the Cougars. But a tough start to the Seminole season. But it could, it'll get better. You know that once they acclimate themselves to a new system. But well, they did a good job today offensively, moving the football and getting the scores and getting the win. I think that was big for that program and for those players. Jim lost the football. Did he get it back? Around the ballpark. So all of a sudden, it'll be, and it is covered by Toon. Uh, but the lights, certain banks went down. So they're going to go over to the sideline, try to figure things out. In a 49 to 7 game with 2.19 to play. Did you have something to do with this? Absolutely not. But I tell you, you saw Toon on that play, fumble the football. That's an example of a guy that's not used to carrying the football. He had the ball out. You've got to hold it high and tight. back we are up and we are running duck soup it is and welcome back to Houston Forrest leave the lights back on it was a candlelight ceremony for a while <laughs> well the concern you have at this point is the players you know cooling off All right make sure your players are warm I thought they'd give them a little warm up here but the guys kept moving around during that whole process staying loose so that was a good job by the coaching staff and now it's a fourth and four two and it's dropped by the tight end, but he was about to be sandwiched anyway. So, in and out of the hands of Christian Strade. And it's back over now on a failure on fourth and four. It goes back to the Tigers. So, a 17 minute rain delay here. And as we welcome you back in the bottom of the seventh inning, now the Tigers of Texas Southern. They get it at the 29-yard line, first and 10. Van Couillet, one pass option. I don't know if I like that option. Not much available. And lost his helmet, so he's got to leave for a play. So you bring up a, a valid point, though. You work. If you're not warm, you're not stretched. And all of a sudden, it, fortunately for these two squads, as Jay Kristoff takes over at quarterback, and he's had a couple of starts. Uh, the young man is graduated already from Addis, Louisiana. Uh, but you worry about just being tight to start playing once again at this level. It'll be second and about eight. Good throw on the outside to Hartside. And I believe he's got enough for the first time he will. Move the chains. Well, you also risk muscle pulls, and you don't want to affect your ball club negatively as both of these teams will step into the heart of conference play after this ball game. So you want to make sure you guys are loose and ready to go. And, I, and like I said, I thought both coaching staff did a good job of keeping guys loose on the sideline while they fixed uh, whatever was going on with the lights. They got it done. There was a power surge here at the ballpark. So a minute to play and count it. On a first down. Brown bounces outside. Good yard. It turns the corner. He's got some decent wheels for us. You can see that with a hole. He can make the most of it. And these are some of the issues that Coach D'Onofrio talked to us about with the second team. They're not doing a good job of stopping the run. He did not 
come up to a defender until he got to the third level of this defense. So a good job by the Texas Southern offensive line to get a hat on a hat. But Houston's defense has to do a better job of getting up the field and not allowing those backs to get to the third level before they see a defender. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Tigers at the 44. Brown belted and put down in the backfield by Emil Fleming, the junior from Lamarck, Texas. Yeah, that should be the final snap of the will be of the third quarter. So one of the longest third quarters you will ever see in college football. Into the third quarter. The delay had something to do with that, but we're not going to let the facts get in the way of a good story. Through three, Cougars, 49 to 7. Start of the fourth quarter, and if he joined us a little bit late, first half, De'Ara King, he dominated 20 of 25 for 200 yards, threw for a touch, three touchdowns, ran for a fourth, very similar to what he did last week when he threw for five and ran for a sixth. Uh, didn't need him in the second half. As the throw by Kouye, not close to Dixon. So it's going to bring up third and long, and welcome back as we start the fourth quarter. Joel Myers along with Forrest Conley in the line of Whataburger. And now, can they get it inside the 34? Keep the drive alive. Last drive was six plays, 69 yards, and a score for Texas Southern. Their best by far in the game for us. This has been four plays so far. Couple of first downs and 24 yards. Well, the offensive linemen have done a good job of big movement against the second team defense of Houston. Slide the tight end. That's long. And ball start. Ball start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty. There you go. Total offensive numbers close to two to one, as you saw, 435 to 230. And 17 more snaps so far for the Cougars. So Kuye got the call. Kristoff, only one snap with a helmet came off of Kuye. Third and about 18, and the blitz was on. Thrown out of bounds, but a good job just the same by Alexander Myers. So a punt coming up for Texas Southern. The opportunity now for guys like Peyton Sawyer, the true freshman from League City, Texas. He's going back deep for the punt. And now you just want to get out here, both sides healthy. Run the football, run the clock. Game is determined at the half. We knew that at 42 to nothing. We also want to get some good time for your guys that don't get a lot of playing time. Especially as you step into conference play where the games will get tougher. Um, you'll face common opponents that are used to dealing with the speed of the game as far as Houston is concerned. So you want to get some of these young guys in because everyone knows you're an ankle sprain away from getting in the ball game. And you want nothing more than if you have to replace a player to replace him with someone that's had some playing time and that you feel confident putting in the ball game. Now they're getting the snaps, they're getting the reps now, as you mentioned, for guys that don't normally get out there. And starting quarterback in particular, De'Ara King, never saw the field in the second half. So it's Clayton Toon, he stays on the field. Looks one way. Man, interesting decision as he went, and he had the running back available. Didn't look in that direction. Instead, went to Henry Thomas, the wide receiver, the freshman from Missouri City, Texas. And that's an example of not taking what the defense gives you. He had the running back out in the flat. Get him the football. Nobody covered him on that play. I know you want to get down the field vertical, but you have to go what, with what they give you. Right Ball tackle stars, lifted up. Offense, number six. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and that's the, the good things that are there for Clayton Toon and the others. They're going to learn by these reps. And they're going to go back and look at the film. And he, why did you dump it off? The running back was unaccounted for. Now, tune out of the gun. Okay. Well covered. As he tried to get it on the outside to Trayvon Bradley. 
but exceptional coverage on that side of the field by Dallas Blaylock Jr., a redshirt freshman from Houston. And for the fan base that feels like Houston may be putting it on or pouring it on, they're getting reps for their second and third teamers. It's not about trying to put more scores on the board. It's about getting reps and getting these guys prepared for situations where they may have to throw the football and may have to score the football. Yeah, Sawyer just made a nice move. Came back on it. Forrest first adjusted on the pass and then made a move after the catch. Good for 23 and a first down. But to your point there, they're getting plenty on film so they can go over with these young men. Well behind Sawyer. It was like almost indecision by the quarterback, and he threw it to the ground. Well, when you get pressure in a young quarterback's face, a lot of times they get rid of the ball prematurely. As a, as a young quarterback, you have to trust your offensive lineman. You've got to trust those tackles to know they're going to keep the width of that pocket and trust the guards in the center to know they're going to keep the depth of the pocket. The carry. A good one once again by Justice. Kevin Justice, the junior from Kilgore. He got about six. It'll be third and four. Clock continues to move. Inside of 14 to play. Fake the jet. Justice adjusting along the way. And he's got a fourth down and about a foot left. And once again, the Texas Southern coaching staff will be able to look at film and see what guys quit, what guys continue to play. This is about character at this point. You know you're not going to win the ball game, but you want to continue to compete. Yeah, it looked like he was about a half yard shy, but they're going to move the chains regardless and move the clock. The positive. Justice stays in the backfield. Now two on the outside. And a good block by the wide receiver. So it enabled extra yards for Henry Thomas, the true freshman. And there have been some really good blocks on the outside. On that play, number 83, Peyton Sawyer did a good job of getting a shoulder on a defender. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to get knockout blocks. Just get in the way. It's like a box out on a rebound. Look out. Down the sideline, and it will go the distance. Henry Thomas. 35 yards for the true freshman. His first career score as a Cougar. And we just talked about wide receivers blocking on the outside. Number 19, Julian Williams, gets a good block on the outside. Once again, not a knockout block, but one of those I'm going to get in the way and allow my teammate to cut off of where I am and as long as I inhibit the space where the defender wants to go to try and make the tackle, I've done my job. So good job all the way around by guys that don't have a lot of reps, and especially together. And that is going to be the extra point. And it's good by Kate Novikov. So the backup place kicker gets in there to score a point. 12.25 left in Houston. Paul Cooper's all night.
Touchdown for Henry Thomas. He won't forget it. 18-year-old Henry Thomas, 35 yards down the field, 56-7 Cougars over the Tigers. We welcome you back once again to the home of the Cougars. We're joined now by Owen Gray, who's got an interesting story for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And Owen, first of all, Joel Myers, Forrest Conley, thank you for taking the time to come upstairs and join us. You actually have picked the Cougars before, so you're the good luck charm, right? I guess so. Yes, sir. Well, tell us what about you, like. how did that all develop? You came day crew, and, and you were on top of it, weren't you? Yes, sir. Um, make a wish. They invited me and ESPN invited me out to game day, um, and ended up being the guest picker that day. Actually, it was a surprise to me. So I had about 30 minutes to make my picks, but the U of H game was the game I knew for sure that I was going to pick. That was the first game I circled <laughs> whenever they gave me my card of games, and um, I knew Ed Oliver and this defense is explosive this year and now the offense we're seeing tonight a lot of offense on right. the field um, so that was the easy game i knew to pick right off the bat um being my houston cougars how do you do with a racing car are you any good with the ponies <laughs> i don't know I haven't, I haven't tried that out yet <laughs> owen gray's with us and forrest how about this guy he's on the game day crew the pressure is on and he takes him against Arizona. Hey, I'm still trying to get there. You've done something I wish I could do is get on the game day crew. So I hear, I, I hear a great rumor that you may very likely be a uh, Houston Cougar next year. Well, it looks like it. I want to be in actually y'all's roles one day. I want to be in broadcasting journalism and here at Houston. They have an amazing broadcast school. They do. And this football team has kind of adopted me this whole weekend um, and brought me alongside of them and not living too far away. It looks pretty pretty good, like I might be a Cougar next year. You should be. And how about this ballpark and the whole facility and the athletic compound we visited yesterday? Oh, my goodness. All the outfits of this brand-new stadium, the Tillman Fertitta Center next door. Man, they, U of H is doing some amazing things around Houston and for this uh, city. Owen Gray is with us for the Make-A-Wish. He not only made Make-A-Wish Foundation, but picking winners, which he does. And now you're from Cypress, which is what? Less than a half hour? Oh, yes, sir. So you have allegiance to most of the Houston teams? Yes, sir. But the Cougars are really close. Oh, yes. They're, they're, they're my team. They're my college team right now, especially since I'm going to become the college here next year. So You had to go to uh, A&M, though, to make the pick, right? I did. I did. Those crazy Aggies <laughs> out there. But, hey, that was an unreal experience. Um, it A&M, is. it's, it's, it's once fun. in a life. I've been place. to College Station many times. It's a great experience. Great college atmosphere. Pressure. Van Couillet on his way down. I hope you become a Cougar, actually. I'm, I'm not objective about this. I don't even want to know your other choices are. Well, yeah. Houston, Houston's right now, especially this weekend, it's, it's become a, a top school easily. Um, yeah, my other schools are here in Houston somewhat that I'm looking at, but Houston's a phenomenal program, and this football team is just, This is a good game to help recruit for me to come to college to, to maybe one day be a part of this broadcast in here. Well, I'll tell you what, you're doing a good job so far. Thank you so much. Absolutely, absolutely. You don't yeah. seem nervous at all in the mic, and uh, I think you'll be a great commentator. Thank you so much. So you'd like to be on? You'd like to be on the broadcast? Side. Oh yes, sir. I'd like to be doing that's exactly what you're doing right now. And oh, there we go. Entertaining. Oh, and thank you for taking the time to come on. Thank you for having us. Yes, sir. And if you ever do decide to delve into the racing part, would you? Contact me You'll first. be the first person I call. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you so much for having me. A you. future Cougar. Yes, sir. That's the way we Pleasure look at it. Me. Thank you so much. Right, take care. Yes, sir. Uh, good story. Thanks, Owen. So, Owen Gray and uh, future Cougar. It's a great story. Goes to the college game day crew. Picks Houston to beat Arizona. And they do beat Arizona for him. Meant to beat apartment. That's what it boils down to. Sawyer with a great return. Sets it up. Now Smith, Chandler Smith on the outside. Ooh, close to a late hit. But a first down pass goes for about five. Give him six. And that's it. While we were talking to Owen, how about the return at the same time by Peyton Sawyer? And that's an 18-year-old first-year freshman who returned to 25 yards. Tune in trouble. And Clayton does a good job. The escapability back to the end zone, and it's punched away at the last second. And that's probably been one of the most impressive things tonight for me is his escapability. You see pressure coming. He stays tall in the pocket. He's able to get to the outside, but he continues to look down the field to deliver the football. 
that's a good job. You don't usually see young quarterbacks make those type of decisions. They make a decision to run, and they run. Right. They don't continue to look down the field. Chandler Smith collared on his way by, but he got enough for the first down. But I, it's a valid point for us because they always wanted to do it by themselves. And remember, this guy played high school football this time last year, and he's ready to do it by himself. But he's going through his progressions and still looking downfield when nothing's available. It's at the 14. He keeps Smith in the backfield. Flat dumps it off. Big yardage to the 10, to the 5. And out of bounds goes Kitte Hatton. He's a senior from Houston. A lot of touches. That's the healthiest part of this game. Five minutes gone by in the fourth. Uh, but guys that don't normally get out there. And there's a senior, obviously, who has not had a lot of reps. At least in live game play. So first and goal outs out of the three. Smith, he's in. Touchdown, Cougars. Second touchdown of the night. The sophomore from Conroe. And a good job by the left side of that offensive line to press everything down and allow the back to basically walk in. By the time the linebacker got to him, he was at the goal line. You see everything just crashed to the inside. And a good job to just get to the end zone. That's what you want to do on goal line plays. You want to crash everything down. Good job by that left side. So Clayton Smith, he may be 5'8", but we saw there a pretty good vertical. 63 to 7 is the Time score up. now. So, not an act to play. The delay, it didn't impact the Cougars. Sophomore from right here in Houston. And a big one at that. Peyton Turner. He has put together quite a game tonight in all areas of the game, not just on the defensive front. And he's done a good job there with the tackle behind the line. But in all areas, special teams as well. There's been a number of contributors on both sides for the Cougars. As they're now up by 56. None of the regulars really have been in in the second half. Maybe the first series for the defense, and that was it. But Clayton Toon has been a quarterback as Novikov will kick it away. Brown and Cunningham wait. And Brown should and will stay in the end zone. So the Tigers get it at their own 25. We're just going over the accomplishments of Peyton Turner. The sophomore and Carhartt recognizes guys like that putting in the work for us to put a big play on specials. You see the big fella fly in and get the block point. And this is where the game started to kind of get out of hand for Texas Southern. He's been all over the field defensively, but that special team play, I think, is what started the onslaught of points. Now Texas Southern with it. And with a new quarterback as he throws it in the direction as the new quarterback Jay Kristoff throws it in the direction of the D-back on that side. Almost went the wrong way. Kristoff's an interesting kid. This is his sixth year. He got another year because of an injury. So it's great to see him out there getting some time playing, especially here at home in a big ball game like this against the big opponent like the University of Houston. Yeah, but so often we talk about a red shirt. Well, it's a medical hardship because of back-to-back -back injuries for you. Two weeks ago, Texas State, the loss, threw for 315 yards and three scores. Can't get out of the backfield of the running play. It'll be second and 15 after Brown loses about five. Make it four, second and make it third, 14. But he also had a 70-yard touchdown pass to Dixon in that Texas State game. So let's see if he can come up with a long pass here and each 14 for the first down. 
225 pounder. They rush four, still get heat underneath, and won't get the first down. Chris Long, the tight ends guy. So good job defensively underneath. Got about five. It's Alexander Myers. He's actually the cornerbacks, Johnson and Myers, were kind of under the gun. After all the yardage, 603 yards were given up through the air last week for us. But Myers has been solid. And that was a good job by Myers. He gives up four inches and about 50 pounds to Chris Long. But he's able to get up under him and get him down. Peyton Sawyer waits back for the Cuevas punt at the 40. Had a really good return of 25 yards. Calling for the fair catch. And he'll get it at the 40. Only a 35-yard punt that time. Eight to play. And around the American Conference. A Thursday, it started with a win for Temple. A two-lane tough on the road at Ohio State. Not, not a shock. Well, that was a tough ball game, Cincinnati and Ohio. That went down to the wire. We're talking about an in-state ball game. Some of those kids at Ohio probably wish they were at Cincinnati. So that was a great ball game. And Cincinnati starts off at 4-0. Been a while. Nippert Stadium. How about Syracuse? They're 4 -0. How about SMU winning in overtime that's, going for the two-point conversion? Yeah, that's big over Navy. Airing it out. And what a grab. Outstanding catch. Read it all the way. Julian Williams. Another first-year freshman. And that's how you reward the receiver. They got the big block on the touchdown in the prior series. Get him a play vertical down the field. So Tune found him for 48. And on a run pass option, it's dropped by the same guy, <laughs> Julian Williams. <laughs> I think Williams just got a little bit excited. You saw him turn his head and try and get up the field. But how about the read on this one? Well, this is a straight vertical route. And Williams is able to get by the cornerback and get a little bit of separation and a good job by Toon putting the ball where he can make a play on it. Ten completions for 184 yards now for Clayton Toon. Peyton Sawyer can't get away. That had worked earlier in the game. Not this time, though. Good job at the D-back on uh, that side of the field. Sure had a tackle for Dallas Blaylock, Jr. Another freshman from Houston so a loss and now it's going to be third and about a dozen but that was a dangerous pass by Tim because Blacklock was right there read the pass he's going the other way Peyton Sawyer can't get away good job so he is put down Real quickly, that was Andre Joseph, the D-back. And Joseph did a good do job to avoid the block and get up and make the tackle. They'll go for it on fourth down. Six and a half to play. They're not going to kick a field goal. Shuttle the tight end. Slow motion. Fade into the corner of the end zone on the jump ball. And incomplete. Had to wait. Pass intended for Morgan on the play. That's Elijah Megan, Jacory Morgan. Another first year freshman, two freshman. And a good job by Blacklock on this play to wait to the ball to get there. And then get a hand in there and just affect the receiver's ability to see the football. You don't want to allow him to see the football all the way through. A good job by Blacklock on that play. Texas Southern that gets it back at their own 10. And that was kind of a deceptive play by the Houston offense because the offensive line kind of stood still at the snap of the football. You have to wonder, was that designed? It was quiet, wasn't it? Trying to get out of the backfield, nothing doing on that carry. Lost Brown, lost a yard or two. Now this is going to be the fourth consecutive game to start the season where the Cougars have at least 45 points and better than 500 yards of total offense. 
They're up right now. Almost 600 yards. 593. So there's not going to be questions. Offensively, I think they know what they're capable of doing. I think defensively, there's still some questions when you talk about their pass defense. As long as they're able to get pressure, I think it helps their, their defensive backs. But when you go into a ball game like they went into last week where they had double and triple teams against Oliver, not allowing him to get that pressure up the center of that uh, front, you know, your defensive backs have to do a better job of coverage because they can't jump rocks. They can't play tight. They've got to cover a little bit longer. When you look at pass rush, the pass rush that a quarterback hates the most is to rush right in his face. He can deal with the pressure from the side because if he's able to step up in the pocket, he's able to deliver the ball down the field. When a quarterback's not able to step up in the pocket, it becomes a problem. Hartzog beats his man down the sideline. Can he make it to the end zone? He will. A long one. 95 yards on the score. And these are the things that this defense has to continue to work to improve on. They can get beat on the outside in man coverage. You see Kristoff lay the ball out perfect for Hartzog. He's able to catch it in stride and then outrun the defensive back to the end zone. So they finally get the big play. It comes too late. Hartzog. The graduate. He's already graduated with a degree from Houston. Cuevas with the extra point. So now 63 to 14. Lighten up the scoreboard. Still in Houston. Come Cougars have shared the wealth with 13 different receivers, catching at least a pass in a 63-14 lead. So you're ready to wrap it up, especially on that sideline with 4.50 to play. Short one, fair catch called for. And Cougars will get it back outside of their own 25 at about the 27. Welcome back once again. We're only about three miles from downtown Houston. Schools are separated by less than a mile, six tenths of a mile after that scoring drive. And the most productive, there was a big play. It's three for 90, but don't forget that the pass started at the five after the two snaps of the loss back to the five yard line. So Tristoff has to his credit now. He's got a 75 yarder, and now he's got a 95 yard touchdown pass. Well, this is a, a, a cause for concern for this Houston defense. They've got to continue to work on their pass defense and getting better coverage on the outside. Speaking of concerns, will anybody catch Walker? Does he go the distance? Yes. Keelan Walker, a freshman from DeSoto, 72 yards. <laughs> and out of breath, didn't take much to knock him down. And if we even am leaving, Matthew Stevenson was right there. He could have caught him. He just could not get there. He tried. Great effort by Stevenson, but just couldn't catch him. I didn't see 70 on the board tonight, did you? This is wild. Ken Novikov will try to make it 70. Nothing fancy about this play for us. No, this is just a straight dive play, and the linebackers got caught coming down, downhill, and you see the back, once he gets to the open field, he makes two fakes in the hole, and once he gets out in the open field, if we even up leaving. Stevenson gave chase, but then once Walker switched and started coming back across the field, Stevenson couldn't quite get there to get him down. Walker had 30 yards on his first eight carries. That one's 72. And once again, I think offensively, we know what Houston is capable of. Yeah, the big mystery, though, is what's going to happen with this team defensively. Well, they've got to be able to get a pass rush. Because well, if they don't, their defensive backs have shown an inability to cover on some of these vertical routes. Well, let me ask you this, because they run the 3-4. 
And if you had a 4-3 with that up front, a 4-3 at Oliver, would it make a difference? Well, it would because now you can't double or triple team him as much. I think what they can do is they can walk some of their outside, their outside linebackers up. One of their outside linebackers up to show a 4-3 look. Even if they don't bring that guy with pressure, what that does is that makes the offensive lineman think a little more and get maybe confused or not feel as comfortable doubling or tripling Ed Oliver in the middle of that defense. Also, you've got to move Oliver around. He's just as effective on the outside from the defensive end position. Cunningham will not make it back to the 20. There's flags all over the place. Uh, we just saw Ed Oliver. He's just, I only bring it up because he's in the middle of a 3-4, and he doesn't look like your typical nose tackle. Going to return. We can block the back. Receiving team number 30 have to get to the goal for a when you talk about a 3-4 nose tackle or zero technique, it's usually a guy that's 6'3", 6'4", you know, 340, 350, you know, Ted Washington, Sam Adams, those big type of right. players. But uh, Oliver is so strong, and he plays with such a low center of gravity. He's like a wrestler. When you see wrestlers that play on the defensive line, they're very good because they have violent hands, which is what he has, and they play with a low center of gravity. So I think because he does both of those things so well, he's able to play a 3-4 nose technique in college. Now, at the next level, I think he will be a 3 technique, but he's such a strong and dominant player in the middle of the defense. You can put him there and he can survive at the college level. Well, and then at the next level, when he's going from Saturdays to Sundays, then the feet, because he's so fast on his feet, then that is a big battle. I think his biggest attribute at the next level is his get-off. He gets off the ball quicker than anybody I've played against during my time. Probably Warren Sapp was the quickest that I'd seen until I watched this young man get off the football. He gets off the ball very fast. And like I said, once again, he's grown man strong. <laughs> and so when he's able to get hands on an offensive lineman, there's nothing you can really do. Inside hands is what all defensive linemen want to get. And when you can push the pocket back, you can push a guard back, you understand how strong this young man is. He's a gifted athlete. Disrupted to say the least. Well, you see him fight off the double team, disengage, and make the tackle. You know, we've seen him bat balls down. Look how low he is right here. And you see that get off right there. He's fast, is what he is. And he's relentless. Yeah, he's got a great motor. And he saw us walking out with bobbleheads yesterday. Ed Oliver bobbleheads from the athletic department. We ran into him, and he, 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 you could tell. He appreciated it. He enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Kristoff runs out of bounds. We've got 2.53 and counting left. This young man is the youngest to ever win the Outlet Trophy. What an accomplishment. As a sample, a consensus All-American. Well, I think what's most impressive about Oliver, he's a hometown kid. Right. He could have went anywhere in the country. He stayed at home with the pressure that you have of playing at home. Think about LeBron James. LeBron James is a kid that stayed at home and succeeded and outdid all of these ridiculous expectations. Well, here's a kid that did the same thing. He stayed at home. You know, not that LeBron had a choice. <laughs> he was fit to stay at home, but, you know, Oliver had a choice. And he stayed here, and he brought the value of this Houston program up with hometown kids because now you have kids that will say, you know, I don't want to go to a Texas or a Texas a and I'm going to stay right here and help continue the tradition that a guy like Ed Oliver started by staying at home. He is sharp right young man as it's a first down for Texas Southern. Kristoff, and it's incomplete. Threw it with the motion went right into the it's ground. So it'll bring up a third or a second down rather, but uh, back to what you were talking about. He leaves after three years. Could have gone Correct. anywhere. And Second day. Thank you. If, if he goes anywhere else, I mean, major programs, put it this way. Is he consensus number one if you're not drafting the quarterback as far as you're concerned? I, Me, personally, I think he is. And I know a lot of people like the young man up at Ohio State from the defensive line position, Bosa. And you can't go wrong with either one of those kids. You know, it just depends on what team and what the need is. Right. I think he's definitely a top five pick, regardless of the situation. 
So he, there's a team that has a quarter, young quarterback. We see a lot of young quarterbacks and a lot of ball clubs. So there's not a big need for first round quarterbacks. So, so let me ask you this: Do you think it's just speculation that he'll welcome the opportunity to play in a four three? Absolutely, because he's going to be a three technique defensive tackle. He's play, not going play to play his, a zero play technique. His strengths. Yes, he's not going to be a zero technique tackle at the next level. Can I? He has the frame to put on 15 or 20 more pounds of muscle mass. But at his height, he would have to be about 340, 350 to play at that level and play that position. Now, there will be times, I think, where he'll shift down and play a zero technique you know, on certain plays. But as far as full time, I don't see that. Punt coming up, he'll run up and run one of the new three backs. There's 70 on the board, 84 total in the game. And I think when you look at this Texas Southern ball club, we've seen some positive things from this ball club. They passed the ball around effectively. They've been able to get vertical. We've seen some good runs. They had some stops defensively. Yeah, they're going to build off some of those pluses that you're talking about and get ready for SWAC conference play. They're not going to see offenses. And they'll be talented offenses in the SWAC. There's no question about that. Gifted athletes. Uh, but this is the spread that we saw down at Baylor for all those years. Kendall was nine years. He was calling the plays for his dad at Baylor. And they, they were pretty efficient and successful. So they've got a good thing going. Major Applewhite, Kendall Bryan's offensive side. Now, if they step up defensively, look out for the Cougars. And once again, I want to acknowledge the sportsmanship that we've seen from both of these ball clubs. When you look at the proximity of schools and the closeness that a lot of these players probably share from high school and little league, the fact that the game got out of hand, but they continued to display sportsmanship and did not allow it to get chippy. Yeah, good job all the way around. And that didn't have a chance from the beginning. And as we saw the schedule, don't forget, only three times, rest of the year, do they leave the state of Texas. That's at East Carolina in two weeks. Then they're at Navy on October 20th and close the season. And it could be a huge game, November 23rd in Memphis. And it could be dicey weather there. You're going to get chilly, maybe even wet. But all they know now, as the new quarterback is in there, for the Cougars, giving the opportunity. Mabagu, redshirt freshman from San Jose, California. And that should be the final snap of the game, and it will be. So, no surprise. The surprise was that they did have a shutout. Let's face it, they've got to be pleased with that 42 to nothing at halftime. So, that's a pick me up for the Cougars defensively. Well, the first team defense did what the first team defense is supposed to do. Shut him down. And the big fellow, Lord Oliver, was disrupted throughout. Uh, you know, not many big flash plays, but he affected this ball game throughout. For Forrest Conley and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. The Cougars prevail and prevail easily over their friends that are less than a mile away campus-wise. Final score in Houston, Cougars 70, Texas Southern 14. So long, everybody.